Welcome to the Liberty Cumberland Presbyterian Sunday Night Bible Study Series. I hope you get a blessing out of our message tonight. For more information about our church services and Bible studies, visit us at www.clarksvillelibertychurch.com. And be sure to like us on Facebook for upcoming events and instant access to upcoming podcasts. Thank you for listening. All right. Uh, right off the rip, I've never really paid any attention to this until I started studying this book. Uh, does anybody know why it's called the Book of Acts? Nicole? Uh, I know. Not off the top of my head. Ben, do you? Anybody? I think because Luke was trying to bring what happened all the way up to the crucifixion and to put it up into the present and to keep it going from there. My, from, from, from what I, yeah, from my research it shows it's the actions of the apostles and in, in the first, the very first church. And I never really thought about that until I done some digging around there and, and found it. So, the book of Acts is a narrative history with several sermons. It does. It's got a lot of different sermons that you could go off preaching on for years. You could probably preach out of the book of Acts for the rest of your entire life. Luke is the author. He was a doctor and a Gentile. It's also Luke's sequel to the Gospel of Luke. And we've covered, you know, what, what, what the Acts means. It's, it's, uh, it's the actions of the uh, apostles, you know, through the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, this book is laying out the very first church, how it was started, where, where it was started at. As we go through this whole book, we'll probably see a big difference of how church is ran today than it was meant for it to be ran when it first started. It's kind of a shame the way it is now because it's got, in my, in my opinion, it's got way off track. Not way off track, but, you know, when... When Christ picked these apostles and uh, He gave them to make the command to go and, and, and to spread the word, that's that command still holds true for every, every one of us in here today if you're a Christian. Our goal in life is to make Christ known. Uh, we don't just need to do that here at church. We need to do that in our workplace and anywhere we can really. Uh, I'm guilty of it, just like everybody else in here is guilty of it. Uh, we were talking about this morning, you know, in Sunday school class, how how easy it is to talk about, you know, church and uh, God and Jesus in a church setting, but when you go out into the everyday workplace, it's a total different ball game. A lot of us, myself included, sometimes we feel maybe ashamed to to talk about these things. Hopefully we can we can change that through the Holy Spirit. We'll go ahead and, and get into it. Uh, Shannon, you want to read verses 1 through 8? If you don't mind. I wrote the first narrative, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day he was taken up, after he had given orders through the Holy Spirit, to the apostles whom he had chosen. After he had suffered, he also presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during the forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While he was together with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father's promise. This, he said, is what you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not long from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, at this time, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times nor periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. All right. The first one is, yeah, what, what is the former account that is mentioned in verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it is. that's exactly right. He's talking about the book of Luke. Who's he talking to? And 
It's well, says, Theophilus is who he's right. And in and in and in the book of Luke, this guy here was, is only named twice in the Bible. How do you say it? The, the, I say it, Theophilus. No. Theophilus. 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 Okay, he's only mentioned twice, and it's. Theophilus. Uh, I, I've read and heard that this guy could have been very high-ranking Roman official, and that uh, Luke was possibly his uh, his uh, personal physician, and this is why he had written written both of these books to him. I mean, it's not it's for us too, but Luke's uh, opening statements here it's it is addressed right to him. So he is. I don't know how important he was. I just figured Theophilus or one of the city. You know, the, the, there's a, um, yeah, during my research, it, it had said something like that. It had oh, said it, 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 was, it wasn't a city, but a group of people, uh, a group of believers. It, mm -hmm. one, theory, uh, one theory is that Theophilus means, that word means, I don't know. And, and it very well be. It, it that well that be. could. I mean, I don't know who this guy was, uh, so. whether it's a group or a person. All right, and and as Shannon read on down, and and it's in really it's in verse five here. As he read on down, if we receive the the Holy Spirit when we receive Christ, why did they have to wait to receive the the Holy Power, the the Holy Spirit? They had to wait. So obviously, these these apostles, some of them were were disciples. That was you know now, now apostles. They, they believed in Christ. They followed him around for at least three years in, during Jesus' ministry. So they believed in him, obviously. They, obviously, they believed in him. They've seen him, they've seen him do, do miracles. Well, they had Jesus there to give them instruction uh, before him. And now that Jesus was leaving and going to his Father, thus the Spirit. Now, now I have to ask the question, was the Holy Spirit available during the Old Testament? He was on Saul. Always there. King Saul. The one that did weird. It said the Spirit come down and changed him, made him into a different man. Or he did wrong. I think in Genesis 3 it says the Spirit hovered over the water too. Yeah. So, You're right. Spirit of God, yeah. But, I know you and I have spoke a lot about this, and we both agree, and we'll get to class's opinion, that we received the Holy Spirit when it, or does, oh, I say, do you, do you believe that when we're saved that we instantly have the Holy Spirit in us? Jesus said, he told them, he said, uh, John baptized me with water, but you are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. When the, when that, that's that the cleansing, and that's when the cleansing mm -hmm. happens is when that Holy Spirit comes into you. And I agree with that. And I, I was telling Dustin, I believe, and I'm just going to take me as an example. When I received Christ when I was 14, I, I'm not I'm not denying that He wasn't in me. I, I, I'm not You're denying. Washed it. in the Spirit, brother. But I, I feel it more today at 39 than I did well, at 14. That's that 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 would make sense there you because go. our whole walk with the Lord, the whole purpose for us to study His Word and together <coughs> together with brothers and sisters is to strengthen our walk with the Lord. And that's in the Spirit. And, and uh, another thing I was telling Dustin is, uh, what, did you ask me how do you receive it? I mean, just as a general question, uh, like how do you get it? And I said, ask for it. That, yeah. that, it's just yeah. it's just that, to me, it's just that simple. If you pray about it, ask for it, say, fill me with the Holy Spirit, I believe you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's that simple act of To me, it, it's like a gas tank to me. I Not... I'm going to say empty just because, in comparison to today, I think I was empty. You said that you were too. You agree with me on that? I do. And and here's my thing. I think it, it obviously the Holy Spirit has to prepare your heart before before you can work for God. I believe that He has to prepare your heart, and then you have to have some some maturing time, like you said, age wise and spiritually. I can tell you, I was 12 when I accepted Christ. Was the Holy Spirit active in my life when I was 18, 16, 18, 19, 20, whatever? He was active, but not as active as He is now. It's a maturing process. I think, I think that's better put. 
was I active? Right. He was as active as he could be. And, and that's a good point. That, that's a very it good does. point. It does. And it goes back to the spirit, you know, is willing and the flesh is weak. I don't want to jump ahead, but when we get over here talk start talking about Paul and his conversion, we're going to see Paul didn't go to preaching right off the bat. No. You know, and it, it takes some time. You know, Garrett, he just, you know, he, he just went up last Sunday and accepted Christ. Mark, Lane, um, and Mason, both both your children have done it. They're, they're young kids. Obviously, that the Holy Spirit is going to have to work in these children's lives to prepare them for what God has in store for them. Garrett or Lane or Mason, any one of them, it's un, I mean, they may be able to do more right now for God than we'll ever be able to do. No one knows that. But for the most part, it seems like you have to. there's a maturing process there. And at some point in time, you have to engage the Holy Spirit. Well, ask God, just like Chris said, ask God for Him to to show you the way. And well, don't you think too, though? Sometimes, if you if you receive Christ at an early age, such as you and Chris, myself, and some of the rest of us, don't you think? Well, yes, you have the Holy Spirit there with you. Don't you think that God knows when the right time is to mm-hmm. when you're ready? Yes. To get that poured on you, be yes. active, and yeah. and and. You know, I mean, everything's about timing, and God's time is different than our time. We 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 expect things sometimes in different orders than He gives them to us, but we have to be smart enough and have faith enough that He's given them to us when we when He knows we need them. In my opinion, and I don't know, but in my opinion, that has a lot to do with it. Well, yes, you re- you receive Christ into your life. You're, as Sam said, washed in the blood, and yes, you have that Holy Spirit available to you. And yes, the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. I think God sometimes can kind of hold it back until we are ready. I mean, that's just my theory, but I know when I was 17, 18 years old, I was in the same situation you were in. I I, I feel like it, I'm a whole lot closer now and a whole lot more ready to accept all those things that he has in store, whatever it is, than I was as a 17, 18-year-old kid. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with here, the time. And, but I will say this. Let me let me go back just a second because I can't let y'all say, can't let Dustin say this and, and this get away from me. We're talking about receiving Christ at an early age and, and talking about Lane and Garrett and, and some of the rest of them and Tori a year or two ago and, and these kids that are receiving Christ in their lives. We have to remember that it's our job to make sure that they don't need for anything biblically doctrine wise we have to be there for them and we don't need to wait till they ask no the kid ain't gonna ask you for help that's right we don't need to wait until they ask we need to you know we need i was talking to garrett last week and and, and i said yeah i know you don't talk about this you know but but tough you know we have to we have to approach that we have to talk to them you know we have to go up and pat them on the back and say, hey, i'm proud of you but Give them that advice. Don't wait till they ask for it, because they're going. They may be a little, they won't ask. maybe way too late in whatever situation. We have to make sure that we're living in a way that they can see it. But we also have to make sure that we're asking them, and that we're there for them, and that we're nurturing them, just like they were our own. Well, that's our they, responsibility as older Christians. And they really are, in a sense. Uh, are I mean, we're all brothers and sisters well, of Christ. Are. That's what so, I said. We, I we definitely have to, agree with that. That's the reason for the scripture. Bring up the, your child, you know, in the way it should go. Mm-hmm. That's the whole thing. Hey, about the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, when you're saved, you're full. You you've got all the Holy Spirit. You're gonna get. That's the Holy Spirit. You can pray every day of your life. Fill me with the Spirit. God's gonna fill you with it. From there. It's a matter of, of learning and studying and walking and drawing closer to God in the Spirit. And that's what makes you feel like you, you, you know, you're just full of the Holy Ghost. It is, is, is growing in Christ. Getting on that meat and chewing it down to the bone. And I can tell you this too. When the Spirit is sure enough active in your life, when you allow Him to be active in your life, when you're active, when, when you're active and you're allowing Him to be active, and when you seek God's help and ask Him That's right. for whatever the case may be, you, you, and I know this firsthand, you will find yourself boldly 
doing whatever it is for God's work. Mm -hmm. And you won't have no hesitation and you won't be afraid to, to say Jesus' name. You won't be afraid. I'm telling you, it seems like the church, when we leave church on Sunday morning, the church is afraid to talk about things of Christ. You know, actually, uh, the Spirit is just like wisdom. Well, it takes a, a while for you to, what you to got, develop Gabby? it. That's a good point. Strange things happen. And in verse 3 here, you got some. I was going to go back to Sam, and I was going to tell him, I, refer, uh, I, I had said earlier, 10 minutes ago, that I, I see it as a gas tank. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take your point and make a note of that because you really made sense there. I think I, were, I was wrong on that. No, you so, are absolutely right because it, you are you are a gas tank, and you have to you you have to live in the spirit and work and work and work in the spirit, and and, and you you become more into the spirit if that makes sense. Right. You become more. You feel it. You, you, you feel it, but, aware of. but what you just said made sense, though, that it's always in you. Yeah, you're at full, the maximum. Yeah, yeah. Spirit and, get. and I had thought coming into this, and I, and I, I even but told you, well, good. maybe my tank was empty. You know, at least I have a tank, but <laughs> but, but, but it was empty. <laughs> you, you know, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna the apostles. Can I answer the first yeah, the apostles. Yeah, yeah, right. And we're getting ready to get into that. Actually, you want to go ahead and get into this? Well, I've got to say something here in verse three too. I I don't want to. Especially going into the the Easter upcoming the, the upcoming Easter, and it says right here in verse three in chapter one, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Christ talked about the kingdom of God over eighty times before his crucifixion, and he talks about it that much more more than that after his resurrection. So, <laughs> you know, this very scripture right here, this very verse is enough in an empty tomb to let us know that we serve the only living God there is. He took his time walking out of that uh, tomb. He wasn't in no hurry. No Roman soldier stole him. Jesus Christ took his time when he walked out of that tomb. And that is that. Did you kind of boost him, getting up, and kind of stretching? Kind of stretching, going, yeah, that ain't got nothing on me, you know. You know, and you know, thank God that we that we're allowed to live in a country and serve a God and have the want to serve the God, the God. That that is, we're blessed beyond we could ever imagine, just because of this very verse right here. That to me, if whoever don't believe in Jesus, I do not understand how they do. I just don't understand. But when I when I was reading and studying, when I when I come to that verse three, I was like, it just makes it so real, and it is real. So, uh, all right, we'll go on. Uh, if someone wants to read nine through fourteen, and when he had spoken these things, <clears throat> while they beheld, he was taken up, for the cloud took him up of their sight, out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall uh, so come as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they into, into Jerusalem from the mount <clears throat> that is called the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, <coughs> being from it Sabbath, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into the upper chambers where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of, ever how you pronounce it, Aphelius, Aphelius, and Simon Zealot, and Judas, James' brother. I just want to point that out. Yeah. I don't have that. These all, huh? I don't have that. The son of Jacobus is what I got. Yeah, it's in the Bible. Yeah, oh, okay. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. You said 14? Yeah, that's it. Sir. Yeah. Hey, uh, before we go further, I've got this. But don't let pen. Yeah, I got it. Uh, 
Uh, in verse, in verse eight, in verse eight, I know I'm backing up here, but I, but I have to back up. And listen, I'm not. Oh no, I was reading. Listen, I, I don't want what I'm about to say. I don't want anything. I don't want anybody to take this to heart, uh, especially the preachers. But right here, there was no seminary. These men, there were no seminary. Jesus Christ gave them an order to go preach, and that's exactly what they did. I'm going to go ahead and, I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to go ahead and give you my opinion on that. If you're called by God to go preach, go preach. That's right. You'll quit. You don't, this is, this is, this is Dustin's personal opinion. If you're called by God, go preach. I don't think you need to go in front of a seminary to say that you're qualified to go preach. That's just, I, I shouldn't have got off on that, but I had to. So, I had to. Uh, is there something wrong with that pen, Sam? <laughs> with what? That pen. <laughs> Y'all, it's killing me. It's killing me. He, he's got me too, Sam. It's killing me. <laughs> I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said it because it's killing me. It's killing me. <laughs> we're we're going to start handing out pencils when we come in. So, all right. Uh, oh, <laughs> All right. Uh, what what else is the upper room significant for? Do I get it? Last supper. supper. Build the last, last supper. supper. Yeah. Luke twenty two seven through twelve. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and also, how long? Why is this even in the Bible? It, it it is important, but and you'll me. I skipped over and I was like, why is that even in there? You know. But how long? Or how long is a Sabbath day journey? I can read that whenever you're half ready. Half a day. That's Joshua. All right, Nicole, you got a half a day. Why why, why have a Sabbath day journey? No. It says in the notes, half a mile. Half a mile. Half a mile. Yeah, because you okay. can only walk so 2,000 so cubits. Does anybody know why that is? Because that was, it seemed like you could only walk that much. I mean, according to, I don't know, the Levitical or it's just extra stuff that the Jews put in. From, from, <laughs> from my research, it is the when the Levites, when the priests were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, that the people had to stay back 2,000 cubics. Oh, and we, 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 we went over what a cubic is in Daniel. What is it, 20 inches? Something yeah, like that. 18 to 20. Yeah, 18 to 20 oh, inches. Yeah. So yeah. that's how far About a thousand yards. That's how far that they were allowed to walk on the Sabbath. And the significance there being the, the Ark of the Covenant. They had to stay that far back. And that's in Joshua 3, 4. Joshua 3, 4. Let me go ahead and read that. Just read it. Cause go I, ahead. Because I wrote it down. Uh, then you will know which way to go. Since you, have been, since you have never been this way before, but keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. So there we go with Scripture backing up Scripture again. How will Christ come again as mentioned in verse 11? Same way He went up. Same way He went up. In the clouds. Same, Same way He went up. Clouds. We're not saying when. We're not saying when. We're just saying how. So... Uh, but I, I but I have to say this too. When he gets ready, when he gets ready, when God tells him to go down, he's gonna come down. So listen, he's not coming at as a baby. Oh no, <laughs> he's not coming no, as a baby this round. No. So he's coming to rule with an iron fist. You know, here's the thing: Christ is coming with an iron fist to rule all nations this time. Last time he come as a baby. Okay, Satan is going to be the one to come in meek. You know what I'm saying? Trickery there. So. What do you mean by me? You know, me. He's like a lamb. He's like a lamb. All right. When you think Jesus. of Satan, you think he's gonna just this bad person is gonna do all these wicked things to you, right? Yeah. All right. Well, that's not how he's coming back. I mean, that's not how he's going to set himself up in Jerusalem. He's gonna be he's good gonna looking. Peace. He's gonna be nice. Everything's gonna be. Oh yeah. He's, he's, gonna, gonna, he's gonna try to say, "I'm God." Right. I'm gonna and Christ is gonna come back to rule. You know, kind of the roles kind of reverse there. You know what I'm saying? You guys yeah. understand you know, that? I know you guys do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if you read all accounts of Jesus. Yeah, deception. And you touched on something. Everything you read and see about Jesus was he was a little lamb. He mm -hmm. was gentle. That's a bunch of hogwash, folks. Jesus wasn't gentle. A gentleman don't go into the synagogues kicking over tables and raising cane and whooping people. Je Jesus was anything but gentle. As far as that goes, he was a man's man. He he, he was no pushover. The, the Sadducees and Pharisees didn't run over top of him. He, he was caring and loving, but he was by no means, uh, you know, a gentle man. Well, you figure, everywhere he went, he walked. 
I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, everywhere he went, he walked. You know, he was a carpenter. You know, we, we, we all have a... A tin maker? But you know, you when you think about Jesus, you think about this skinny... Daddy was a carpenter. Daddy was a carpenter. You know, you think, when you think about Christ, at least I do, when you think about Jesus... You think about this, you know, this meek man, this meek person that's, but he wasn't like that. I, I don't believe that he was like that at all. Can you stand on a mountain or on a hill and speak as loud as he did so everybody could hear you if he was a meek little mouse? I couldn't have made it through the fasting when they Satan tempted him. That's right. You know, I mean, he stayed in the, he was, he stayed, how long was he in the wilderness? Okay, Ben, you want to read? If you don't mind, 15 through 26. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of the names was about 120 and said, Men and brethren, this scripture has been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us, and obtained part in this ministry. Now the man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that field is called, in their own language, a keldama, which is field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us at the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed to John called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these you have chosen to take part in this ministry and the apostleship from which Jesus by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Alright, we read about uh, Judas's account here. There's two accounts of Judas's death. We know he went and hanged himself, and then... You know, anyway. Well, the Bible says he, he, he threw himself uh, in long. And he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Well, he hanged himself. He hanged first. himself. I think wasn't it in the yeah. gospel? Yeah, what, what he hanged gospel? himself first. It says in mind apparently the tree on which Judas chose to hang himself uh, overlooked a cliff. Likely Judas chose, or uh, likely the rope or branch broke, or the knot slipped, and his body was shattered in the rocks below. I'm thinking that he hanged himself, spent some time there on the end of that rope, then rotted. And boom, when he when he felt when you know when that's when whatever the, broke, that's that's the rest of the story. Cut. That is the rest of the story. So went, I've always boom. understood that, that he, where he hung where he hung himself was overlooking that this field. Right. And yeah, but I mean, ain't no way he hung himself and then got back down. No, he, so, no, I think I think something something was cut or rotted or so. There's. I don't, no, I, I, don't, I, I don't believe that. I don't. No, he, I've got a, it's well I, documented. Well, at least that helped him out. I hate to get yeah. it. One and uh, nothing in here says anything about hanging in either of these Bibles. It says he went. One said he went headlong or head first into the ground. Oh, I'm I'm sure that he hung himself. Yeah, I, I've read that before. I think it means head first. Head first. But anyway, not to get wrapped up on Judas, but there is two. His head popped off and he, there is two accounts of Judas. I think the other one's in Matthew. Matthew twenty-seven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you want to get to that? Yeah. You just look, that? look up Matthew twenty-seven, Sam. Well, what Matthew? The one that his place? No, Matthias. 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 You know, like Matt, Matt saw mill down there in Stewart County. Yeah. When that Matthias, I remember. Him. What do you do? <laughs> twenty-seven one. Judas five. And when he had cast down the silver pieces in the temple, 
He departed and went and hanged himself. There you go. Yeah, there, over here it says he hanged himself. Yeah, so there, Acts, there's two is the rest of the story. Yeah, mm -hmm. Acts is the rest of the story to Judas's deal. And you know, some of the there's a couple of Judases in the Bible, and they always have a couple of different names that go along with Judas. And the reason being, from what I found out this past week, is so they do not get mixed up with Judas right. with Judas. Ever how you say his last name? I can't it's scary. It's scary. So whenever you see not that Judas, but another Judas in there, it always have a couple different names attached along with it. So nobody is referring to him as the Judas. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think Dustin in this right here, it matters not how I mean he died. That field is 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 the thing we need to know. It's void. Yes. Never and, be inhabited again. And also, you, you can read about that field of blood also in, in Psalm. Why were there 120 people in the room? Or about 120? It don't never nail down a specific number. It Everything that I read says about 120. Let me tell you something. You get 120 people in a... And I'm sure their buildings there in Jerusalem were kind of on the small side. You take 120 people that's filled with the Holy Spirit, look out. You know, something's fixing to happen. Something is fixing to happen. And we read about that next week. Yeah, and we're going to read about what happened next week. How did they choose them? First off, they prayed. They pr That's the thing, they prayed. They prayed and said, hey, you know the one that... Show us the one you already have picked out. They cast their lots, and of course, Mathis is name, however how you say his name, come rolling out of the cup. What, what Bob found was about, uh, you, uh, about him was that he hanged himself, and he hanged there for a while. And you know how you blow it up and burst. That's, that's, so there was a little time lapse to it. Yeah. Like, like you and Chris said, that, that's just the rest the continuation. Of the story. And this Mathis, now he's part of the twelve. He, he he's only mentioned here in Acts. I'm sure that he was he he hung. I mean, he hung around Christ and the disciples a whole lot for him. You know, for him to be picked. You know, obviously. All right, and um, what's the difference in an apostle and a disciple, Damon? You want to look up Matthew ten one. You can't see. I'll read for him. And when he had called into him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So, did the did the disciples have power? Wait a minute. Those that was his apostles. When he called his disciples, which is what they were, to him. Some of them, not all the disciples, are apostles. Are apostles? No, I'm. Mean, we do have the same Holy Ghost living in us as, as they did. They were the same. I think it's called on the twelve it called on the twelve disciples unto him and then the twelve apostles. Then why wasn't they all called disciples or apostles? If they're all here's the, here's, the, here's the definition. There you go. As an apostle an apostle is one of Jesus Christ's twelve close disciples. Chosen by him early in his ministry to spread the gospel after his death and resurrection. In the Bible, they are called Jesus' disciples until the Lord ascends into heaven. Then they're referred to as apostles. Once you have the powers. But we have, we have over 120 people here in this room. That don't mean they were all. But he only, yeah, he only called No, 12. he just said he called his right. 12. Right, exactly. And gave them, he ordained at that point, he ordained the twelve. There's your word. Right. Right. There Those you twelve. That people. was the seminary. Uh, that was his, that was his, <laughs> that was his theological, the theological school right there. Did the Spirit go on all of them? Yes. In Acts, which would be all of them present, which would be all 120? Yep. That's the way I read it. That's, That's the way I, I understand it. That's all. The Holy Spirit descended on everybody that was in that room. So here's what I've learned basically from chapter one was we have to wait. We ha we cannot do anything for God unless the Holy Spirit is in us. And we have to wait. We we have to have, learn patience. They had to wait. They these guys had to wait for the Holy Spirit. After at least three years of following Jesus around, watching him do all this, these miracles, they had to wait for it. We don't have to wait. All right, next week we're going into chapter two. Thank you for listening to our podcast. 
For more information about our Bible study series, go to www.clarksvillelibertychurch.com. Be sure and like us on Facebook for updated Bible studies and church information.